Hey there students, welcome back to Intensive Review and in this segment I'm going to talk about USHC 5.4 focusing on World War I. Alright, so you've got all kinds of stuff here, fancy language, all of that kind of stuff, but essentially World War I. Now as far as the causes of World War I, now this is going on in Europe. This is a European war. What are the causes? The alliance system and nationalism. Now there are other causes, but as far as for your curriculum guides for this exam, the alliance system and nationalism. And knowing that the, you know, these alliances, the bench clarity effect, yada, 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 and then you've got the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand, all right, who was assassinated by a Serbian nationalist in 1914. And these alliances are invoked, and it leads to a full-scale war that Europe is uh, just everybody's at war with everybody to speak of and all of that. So... What does this have to do with us? Now, keep in mind that although the United States has started to dabble in imperialism, we still have yet to get involved in a European war. All right, keep in mind that really when you think about it, the big stick foreign policy, is that getting us closer to Europe or farther away from them? You know, we don't want you over here, all right? So really, the big stick foreign policy is a continuation of 19th century avoidance of European conflict. So what does this have to do with us? And Americans generally wanted to keep out. And from 1914 to 1917, the United States maintained a foreign policy of neutrality that we steer clear of permanent alliances. Missing out on all that fun. So, how did we get mixed up in this? Provocations. There are three of them, and we can call on our friend Dora the Explorer to help us out. Cruise ship, telegram, submarine. One more time. Cruise ship, telegram, submarine. Now, the cruise ship. The sinking of the U of the Lusitania by German U-boats, all right? The sinking of the Lusitania, which was a cruise ship. Now, keep in mind that while there was a lot of public outcry because of this, this did not get us involved in the war, okay? In fact, when Woodrow Wilson is running for re-election in 1916, his slogan is, he kept us out of war. That there were some people clamoring for war after the sinking of the Lusitania. Wilson did not make it happen. So remember that the Mexicans are still a little bit irked that we took half their country. And the Germans know that. And the Germans get in touch with Mexico in the form of the Zimmerman note, okay? The so-called Zimmerman telegram. And what happens here is the Germans say, Mexico, if you'll go to war with the United States, if the United States gets involved in a war with us, if you will attack the United States, we will give you Texas and New Mexico and Arizona. I don't know how they plan to deliver on that. It's really kind of laughable when you think about it, but that was what they were thinking. And so there is the telegram. And also in this telegram, the Germans state their intention to resume a policy of unrestricted submarine warfare, which they previously abandoned in order to, como se dice, uh, in order to keep the United States out. All right. So yeah, all this door has got me uh, speaking uh, Espanol. All right, so anyway, remember the provocations again? Cruise ship, telegram, submarine. A little off on my slides there. I pressed the wrong button, but anyway, you get the point. Now, so Wilson's war message. The direct calls, the German policy of unrestricted submarine warfare. All right, but Wilson said that while we're at this, we are going to make the world safe for democracy because democracy is the end-all, be-all, right? Grab your gas mask. Let's go. Vominos, people. All right, so 1917, the Selective Service Act. Keep in mind that this was one of four times where there was a draft in U.S. history. The Civil War, World War I, World War II, and Vietnam. Propaganda. All right, let's take a quick look at war propaganda. Now, first of all, we have four points for this. First of all, recruitment for soldiers, sailors, and nurses. Then we want people to finance the war. All right, We want people to finance the war through buying liberty bonds. Then we want to conserve resources. And finally, to dehumanize the enemy. All right, So those are your four things, the four elements of the propaganda campaign. 
And you see here, you are dehumanizing the enemy here. That here is the enemy who abuses women. Which side of the, you know, which side of the window are you? Okay, so are you the guy that's out there going to war or are you the guy inside appealing to manhood? All right, uh, once again, we see here you can uh, learn a trade or something like that. If I were a man, I'd join the Navy. So once again, if you're a real man, then go ahead and, uh, and join. Even a dog enlist. I mean, this dog showed up and volunteered. So, you know, not you. And, you know, become a trained nurse. The 19th Amendment, keep in mind, women's suffrage happened in the wake of World War I, 1919. So women's participation in the, in the war, that's, uh, you know, has a bearing on this. <laughs> Daddy bought me a Liberty Loan. We see here the Liberty Bonds, all that kind of stuff. If you think that, you know what, I don't have enough money for a Liberty Bond. Well, this guy died. All right. So you can afford a Liberty Bond. Save food, meat, and wheat. Okay, keep in mind. But uh, un-American to eat steak during the war, as, as American as steak is in most cases. No wheat either. Remember, meat and wheat. So did you know? Cottage cheese has more protein than, like, all this other stuff. It doesn't matter. I want meat. But during wartime, it's unpatriotic to eat too much meat. Planet Victory Garden, yada, yada, sheep clubs. Woodruff Wilson had sheep on the White House lawn. Anyway, I think you're getting the point, all right? There's the sheep. All right. It's on YouTube. And then dehumanizing the enemy, calling him the Hun and that sort of thing, and uh, portraying him as, a, as an ape, as a mad brute. Now, the Espionage and Sedition Acts. We've talked about the Alien Sedition Acts. These were very similar, that there were a lot of laws that were passed here to outlaw anti-war speech, discouraging the purchase of war bonds, opposing the draft, and all of that kind of stuff that could undermine the war effort. The other day, I saw somebody with a front license plate with a German flag on it which during World War I, this was illegal. If someone were to display a German flag, it was illegal. So we see here that the Constitution is often ignored by government during wartime. Eugene Debs put in jail for resisting the draft. And hot dogs. Before World War I, they were more commonly called Frankfurters. You sometimes hear like about Franks, right? Okay, Frankfurters. We don't want to say that because we're at war with Germany. The German language used to be a very popular language to be taught in schools in the United States. Keep in mind that Germans make up the single largest group of, uh, you know, ancestry claims in the United States. But you barely see the German language taught over here. That's largely a result of the World Wars. Before that, it was taught quite a bit. As I said, a crime to display an enemy flag of someone we're at war with. So the armistice is signed, Germany surrenders, and they surrender on 11-11 at 11 a.m. And that's why on Veterans Day we observe like, you know, a moment of silence typically at 11 a.m. So now on to Wilson's 14 points. Now, the principles of Wilson's 14 points, we're not going to go through all 14 of them, but let's look at five principles here. First of all, freedom of the seas. All right, what we're trying to do here is keep a war from happening again. So each of these is looking at one of the causes. So if you look at the arms race before World War I, and also that neutral nations such as the United States should be able to use the seas without interference. Then reduction of arms. The arms race, once again, that uh, people were building up before the war, and after the war we need to reduce arms. Open treaty negotiations. A lot of secret agreements were made before and during the war. Wilson says we don't need these secret agree agreements. Self-determination of peoples. Nationalism in the Austrian Empire was one of the causes. So what we need to do is we need to break up the Austrian Empire. We need to take some land away from Germany. And we need to create states that are based on nationality. And then five. We need to create a League of Nations, all right? And keep in mind that the goal here, as he gets on the USS George Washington, is a peace without victory. That's what Wilson wants, is a peace without victory. And it's really easy to say when he gets over there to the Paris Peace Conference uh, to discuss the Treaty of Versailles. And the United States, when we look at this, the United States was responsible for 2% of the total military deaths when you look at France and Britain a lot more than that 
And we want to make sure that there's no more aggression. The war guilt clause, okay? And this is where the Allies, uh, especially the French, insisted on a war guilt clause, which Germany would claim responsibility for the war, and they would pay reparations to the Allies, to Britain and France. And again, 14 points. We've got those. And the side Treaty of Versailles. Wilson scores a couple big victories, okay? The national borders and all of that kind of stuff and the League of Nations. So, that pretty much puts us through World War I, and we will next go on to the Versailles Treaty Controversy. See you in a bit.